Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Ships are often massive in size with large systems, such as their engines. When the main engine of the U.S. Coast Guard cutter Healy burnt out, it needed to be replaced. Needless to say, it was a massive undertaking. The designation cutter was coined in 1790 to describe the first revenue marine ships with one mast and a fore and aft rig. Today, the United States Coast Guard considers any vessel over 65 feet in length as a cutter. And it operates a wide fleet, ranging from 87-foot patrol boats to 418-foot national security cutters. These flexible vessels serve numerous functions, including law enforcement, search and rescue, maritime security, and ice operations. Modern cutters have advanced radar systems, sophisticated communications equipment, and helicopter landing capabilities allowing them to operate effectively in various weather conditions. The engine room of cutters like the U.S. CGC Dallas, like all Hamilton-class cutters, serves as the vessel's heart. Twin Fairbanks Morse diesel engines produce 36,000 horsepower, necessitating regular monitoring by engineering watchstanders. Engineers use a complex network of gauges, switches and monitoring stations to maintain exact control over propulsion, electrical systems, and auxiliary equipment. Temperature control is critical, with numerous ventilation systems keeping the machinery within operational limits. The compartment also contains critical firefighting, damage control, and water purification equipment, ensuring the cutter's continued operations. Deviation from any of the safety procedures could lead to dire consequences. In August 2020, the Coast Guard's largest vessel and the U.S.'s largest and most technologically advanced icebreaker, the U.S. CGC Healy, caught fire in its starboard main propulsion motor while sailing in the Arctic. This mishap left the icebreaker with only one operational engine, necessitating mission abortion. A 100-ton replacement engine was carried by barge from the Coast Guard Yard in Baltimore in a complicated logistical operation. The large spare propulsion unit traveled 6,000 miles through the Panama Canal to Seattle where it was meant to be installed to restore Healy's vital Arctic research and national security capabilities. Even before the Healy was in Vallejo's dry dock, it was realized that replacing Healy's broken propulsion motor would be complicated. Cutting through the icebreaker's double hole created a huge access point. Specialized heavy lift qualified personnel utilized industrial cranes to remove the burnt out 100 ton motor and then push the replacement unit through the hole opening utilizing sliding rails. While welders sealed the hole, engineers precisely matched the new motor with drive systems. The month long process required careful attention to the vessel's ice breaking structure. Even the smallest weakness could lead to damage while breaking through pack ice. After the engine was replaced, the U.S. CGC Healy set sail on an important mission to the Arctic. Following its departure from Nuke, Greenland, the vessel transported a group of scientists from educational institutions in the United States and Norway. As part of their mission, they were tasked with conducting oceanographic research in Baffin Bay and gathering important data on the changes that have occurred in the Arctic ecosystem. Researchers successfully penetrated the polar ice while simultaneously deploying advanced underwater monitoring equipment and collecting samples to investigate the impact of climate change in these otherwise inaccessible regions. Ships from the Canadian Coast Guard also undergo engine replacement operations on occasion. 
crews from C-SPAN's Vancouver Dry Dock successfully removed three 42-ton engines from the CCGS Sir Wilfrid Laurier, marking a significant milestone. The first engine had to be removed through the vessel's side shell, while the other two were extracted using an innovative track system. Hydraulic rams put the gigantic engines onto wooden blocks and specialist self-propelled modular transporters delicately lowered them. This difficult procedure marked the beginning of the vessel's most significant life extension overhaul in Vancouver dry dock history. As the preparations for the new engine installation began, C-SPAN's engineering team collaborated with Canadian Coast Guard specialists to assess both existing and new technical standards. They created detailed installation blueprints while building new engine beds and doing considerable welding work. Meanwhile, crews started updating the vessel's infrastructure, installing 9 of 15 kilometers of new cable for the shipboard integrated communication system. Multiple trades worked simultaneously, with up to 160 people coordinating daily to achieve accurate alignment for the approaching Wartzilla L26 engines. November 2023, the vessel arrived alongside a Vancouver Dry Docks facility. The Sir Wilfrid Laurier weighs 3,812 tons and is currently supported on 58 blocks on top of the Kareen Dry Dock. Only 10 weeks after the original engines were removed, C-SPAN's team completed another milestone, successfully installing three new Vortzilla L26 engines in the Sir Wilfrid Laurier engine room. The installation process benefited from specialized training at the Coast Guard College, where engineers had previously worked on an identical engine. After positioning the new power plants, personnel completed crucial connections and began system integration. The final procedure involved welding the hull cutout back into place and adding fresh paint, bringing the icebreaker to operational status for another 10 to 15 years of use. Ship engines are getting mega large. The WinGD 14RT Flex 96C is the world's most powerful ship engine, weighing more than 2,300 tons. Each of the 14 cylinders has a large 96 centimeter bore and 250 centimeter piston stroke. Construction begins with the huge engine block casting, necessitating precise temperature control when cooling. The crankshaft alone weighs 300 tons and is manufactured to exact specifications. Engineers build each cylinder unit with pistons larger than a car engine and install fuel injection systems capable of handling both heavy fuel oil and cleaner fuels. Operating at 102 RPM, each cylinder generates 5,720 kilowatts for a total of 80,080 kilowatts. The completed engine, which stands 13.5 meters high, gives efficient power to cargo ships while fulfilling modern pollution prevention standards in terms of emissions. WinGD, for example, designs modern marine engines that mix conventional engineering and cutting-edge technology. Engineers begin with 3D CAD modeling, developing detailed digital twins of each component while using traditional paper drawings for regulatory compliance. The finite element analysis program simulates stress patterns and thermal loads. Critical components such as gas admission valves are rigorously tested at specialist facilities. Engineers use high precision sensors to determine valve lift accuracy, hydraulic pressure responses, and control signal timing. Test cells assess fuel injection patterns and combustion properties. Before integration, the design process includes significant prototyping of subsystems. Engineers employ computational fluid dynamics to improve gas flow and mixing, while real-time monitoring systems are being developed to ensure stable dual fuel operation. Each design iteration is thoroughly validated before final approval. The assembly of enormous dual fuel engines such as the WinGD 12X92DF requires extreme precision and specialized equipment. The process begins with installing the bed plate, 
which weighs several hundred tons and requires laser alignment. The Enormous is the final step in assembly. Engineers utilize digital torque tools to produce precise bolt tension. Before being delivered to the shipyard, the completed engine undergoes extensive testing, including mechanical run-in, combustion optimization, and emissions verification. Before a new marine engine design enters service, it's thoroughly tested both in the factory and at sea. The WinGD XDF engines first go through shop trials, in which engineers test all mechanical systems, emissions performance, and fuel switching capabilities under controlled settings. During sea trials, such as those for the Turnsun's 5RT Flex 50DF engine, engineers assess real-world performance under various situations. Acceleration runs, fuel consumption assessments at various loads, and emergency case simulations are among the tests conducted. Vibration levels, heat loading, and exhaust pollutants are all monitored using specialized sensors. Critical examination focuses on the smooth transition from gas to diesel operation, particularly during maneuvering. Engineers collect information about combustion stability, load response, and control system performance. Before commercial deployment, these experiments confirm engine dependability as well as compliance with environmental requirements. Ship engine replacement requires a lot of planning and heavy machinery to accomplish. These operations could take a month or more and require high-level engineering prowess. As challenging as it is to design and construct these multi-story ship engines, maintaining them is often even more difficult. Unfortunately, given the critical role of marine engines in ship operations, regular maintenance and servicing are essential to ensure their reliability and longevity. This often involves complex procedures performed by specialized maritime engineers working in specialized canals known as dry docks. Dry docks are used around the world for a variety of purposes. The gated areas are connected to waterways and sit under the water line so that they can be quickly flooded. Once the ship is positioned inside, the gates are closed and the water is pumped out, giving maintenance crews complete access to parts of the ship that would otherwise be under the water. In many cases, the damaged or worn parts of the propulsion system will simply be removed so that they can be repaired or refurbished in a nearby maintenance facility. This can apply to entire thrusters, propellers and other large components. Building these engines and even larger ones requires more capabilities and abilities from ship engine building companies. Today, we have engines that dwarf the largest ones built a decade or two ago. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.